Hello everyone! In this quick Blender tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to easily create a 3D object from an SVG file so that you can create some cool 3D animations for your logos and drawings. Okay, so let's say you want to create some basic logo with a few geometric shapes. If you want to keep a fully free and open source workflow, you can use a vector graphics editor like Inkscape. This type of software will allow you to create drawings based on geometric primitives or curves, and it will directly create scalable vector graphics, aka SVGs. Once you're done preparing your image, you can open Blender and clean up the startup file. Now, all you have to do to reintegrate your SVG is to import it via the File Import menu, and then pick the SVG format. The shape you imported will be added to your 3D scene with one flat object per part in your initial SVG drawing. But if you tab into edit mode, you'll see that this object is not a mesh as usual, but a curve. Basically, in Blender we usually use meshes for 3D objects. Those are the shapes we create from vertices, edges and faces. But when you want more control on the shape of your object, and in particular when it doesn't have straight edges like a cube or even a 3D sphere, you can rely on another type of objects, the curves. The idea is that rather than having vertices joined by edges, you define control points and the curve will be auto-computed based on those positions with tools like Bezier curves. This makes it easy to create smooth and complex shapes without having to handle an insane amount of vertices to get enough detail. Typically, in our case of an SVG file, since there can potentially be curves or paths that are not simply linear everywhere, Blender automatically imports the data as a curve. Even if your initial shape is a basic polygon, you'll see that it is imported with sharp control points still in a curve object. That's pretty cool because it ensures that your shape will be imported with as high fidelity as possible. However, you can notice two things. First, the shape is quite small compared to the rest of the scene. And second, it is anchored to its bottom left corner, which is different from most other 3D objects. So let's see how to quickly solve both these problems. For the scale, we can of course simply scale the object up. But to avoid any problems further down the line with modifiers like the bevel or the offsets and other scale-dependent parameters, a good thing is to actually apply the scale so that the object keeps its current dimensions in the scene, but resets its scale to 1 on all axes. This can be done directly by pressing Ctrl plus A or by going to the Object Apply Scale menu. You see that the object didn't change visually, but its scale is now back to 1. For the origin, we can just go to the object, set origin, origin to geometry menu, and then reset the position of the object by pressing Alt plus G. Depending on the shape you imported and the final visual that you want, there are several tools you can then use on your newly created curve object. Most of those are in the object data properties inspector in the bottom right corner, which you can switch to by clicking the little green curve icon. Here, you can do a few things, like adding an extrude on the path, or offsetting it from its initial position. If your SVG contains just a stroke, and is therefore invisible for now, you can even play around with the bevel options to turn this stroke into an actual 3D contour. If at one point you want to go back to a more common workflow using meshes, for example to get the usual tools, you can always go to the Object Convert menu and turn your curve back into a mesh. Other than that, your object should now be ready to tweak, animate and render in Blender to create some nice visuals based on your SVG file. So there you are, you've now got all the basics to importing an SVG file, fixing its transform if need be, and applying some effects to your curve. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up if you did, and to subscribe to the channel to see more of my videos. And also, tell me in the comments if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, so I can make other tutorials on those topics. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.